I would like to talk about the way the development of new institutions to solve common pool resource problems is actually sort of nested collective action problems within nested collective action problems. Okay, and that, that intro may have sounded really jargony, but this won't be as jargony as, as you think. Um, I'm doing a series on Eleanor Ostrom's Governing the Commons, which talks about the game theory of how institutions evolve. And in particular, she's trying to figure out, can groups of people come together and build their own institutions without government involvement or without private firms coming in and solving the collective action problem for them. And I think this is really important in the modern age because if you look at a lot of the problems on digital platforms, and I think also eventually problems with artificial intelligence, these are going to have the traits of a common pool resource problem. Now, of course, in her book, she is talking about fisheries and forests and uh, pastures where uh, towns graze their cows as the common pool resources that a group of people may want to collectively govern. But with digital resources, it's going to be sort of um, the ethos of the platform, the collective conscience, um, the amount of bullying and mobbing and all that stuff. So um, these issues, I think people need to understand these issues. And this, th this video is about um, the three problems that groups need to solve if they're going to build their own institutions apart from private firms and apart from government. And those problems are um, the supply of institutions. Like, it's obvious why groups of people might want, want these institutions, but then why would the groups come together and actually supply that? That's a puzzle. And then how do you get people to commit to the institutions and the rules that would be good for everybody if, um, if the group could solve them? And then how do you have mutual enforcement of those rules so that you don't need a government to come in and enforce them for you, or you don't need a private firm like, um, like all of the digital platforms right now to come in and solve them, but rather it's something that everybody in the community collectively agrees upon. And each of these problems is going to be its own little mini multiplayer prisoner's dilemma, which is kind of fun. Now, I'm going to talk about this as if it's a little town, a historical town, say in the 1700s, where the town lives on a river that sometimes dries up and almost never has enough water for all of the people in the town to water their crops. Because in the rest of the book, she goes through these historical cases that are much like that case where you have these little towns governing some resource, which is oftentimes a water-based resource, and they're trying to govern it in a way that, that is satisfying to the whole community. And that's just a common example. So first off, we recognize that the governance of this river water for irrigation is a classic tragedy of the commons where everybody has an incentive to take more water from the river than, um, than is good, and that's of course going to dry up the river. That's a problem. If the river dries up too soon, then uh, everybody can't water their plants at the end of the summer, and that's not good for the whole community. So they want to make sure that the, the water from the river lasts the whole summer uh, irrigates enough crops to sustain the population, and that's, that's the goal. And it's a multiplayer prisoner's dilemma, which I represent on a diagram like this, where we have one player here and everyone else here, um, which is not necessarily the right way of uh, structuring this, although I find it to be a very helpful way of just simplifying the problem. So cooperate here is only take as much water as um, will not dry up the river by August, and defect is to take as much water as you want for your plants early in the season, and if everybody does that, the, the river is dry by August. So um, the dominant strategy here is to defect, is to take too much water. When everybody takes too much water, everybody's crops suffer from that. So we're trying to force cooperation, because if we can force everybody just taking enough, then everybody's crops uh, last. So the, the problem the community is trying to solve is one of these games in and of itself. 
Now, if you're going to create a community-based institution to solve this, the first problem is the supply of institutions problem, which she actually connects with Robert Bates. Like she has a whole source she cites. So it's not just her ideas, it's she's building on other people's ideas. But the idea here is we all know why everybody in the community really wants some mechanism for getting us up here. In other words, the demand for such institutions is really, really obvious. Um, and of course, what do these institutions do? These institutions essentially impose a cost to everyone who defects. And if you impose that cost, then it, uh, it changes the Nash equilibrium such that everybody ends up up here and that's better for everybody. That's what these institutions essentially do. And the cost here can be a social cost in the community. It can be an official cost, like a risk of uh, being shunned from the community or a risk of being taxed or penalized or thrown in jail or whatever. So there's a demand from the population for an institution that will enforce the cooperative equilibrium. But um, why would anyone want to supply that other than government and private firms who can make money off of it? And that, that's a puzzle. And when we're talking about supply of these institutions, we're talking about the town hall meetings where everybody comes together and agrees upon some set of rules and some set of sanctions and some way that the community is going to enforce those sanctions, which probably means that um, some sets of rules favor one group, some sets of rules favor another group. For example, if you have farms that are sort of located upstream and downstream, um, what about the downstream farms? Are When they draw from the water, what if there's less left? In which case, are they allowed to draw from the upstream water? Or do we make sure that the upstream farmers leave enough for the downstream farmers? And how do we even enforce that? Is it by time? Like you have one time slot where you can draw water. Well, doesn't that kind of disadvantage the downstream farmers a little bit? So there's all these complicated questions you ask when you come together as a town to come up with the rules for the institution. And the, the situation of forming these rules is actually going to be another multiplayer prisoner's dilemma because everyone wants the set of rules that favor them, whether they're upstream or downstream or whether they have more property or less property, and they disfavor the rules that favor everyone else. So there's a cooperate and a defect scenario and everyone has an incentive to try to get the rules to favor them, which leads to this sort of impasse where nobody can agree on the rules. So you have a second order uh, uh, collective action problem. And of course this, the multiplayer prisoner's dilemma, is also a collective action problem. So the way I'm going to frame this is I'm going to say there is a cooperate and a defect strategy in every one of these nested collective action problems, and I'm going to list them. The top game they're trying to solve, cooperate is taking too much water, defect is just taking a sustainable amount of water that will sustain the shared resource. The second game down, which is associated with the first problem that groups have to solve if they're going to create uh, their own institutions, is um, cooperate is agree to a, a set of rules that is not necessarily the set of rules that would most favor you personally. And defect is, you know, fold your arms and only agree to rules that are the rule set that is most in favor of yourself. And of course, it's the same game. We end up down here without any cooperation where everybody says, I'm not agreeing unless it's my favorite set of rules. Now let me simplify each of these because we're going to move on. Now the next problem is the problem of commitment. And this is going to be a collective action problem because everyone has an incentive to say they're going to commit to the rules, but then to shirk the next period and to ignore the rules and still take the water that's, that's more than they should be taking. Um, and that sort of goes back to this top game, but it's basically like when we come up with these rules that would force the community into a cooperative 
situation. We need people to truly commit to that set of rules where they're like, actually, yes, I will follow the rules of the community. And so the next nested collective action game here is to commit actually or to pretend to commit and to defect the next round. And of course, that begs the question, how do you get people to truly, truly commit? And it, which it leads us to this third problem that the group needs to solve, which is how do you create mutual enforcement? Because people will commit if they believe that other members of the community will actually enforce the rules that they've come up with in this uh, group institution they're creating. And so that's our next one. If we want to solve the problem of mutual enforcement, we have another problem because it's costly to the individual to enforce the rules. Like you kind of have to be a stickler, people might call you a stick in the mud, people might um, be upset at you for, you know, engaging in just a little bit of conflict to make sure the rules get enforced. Um, so it's costly to the self, but the benefit is to the group. The benefit is that enforcing the rules, which is sort of imposing the the cost of negative six up here leads to the better equilibrium, but everyone has an incentive to be a free rider and not enforce the rules, let somebody else in the community enforce the rules, and of course the result of that is that nobody enforces the rules and you end up back here. And so that's our fourth game. Each of these is a nested collective action problem, and so it's hard to get institutions to evolve naturally. Now her whole deal in this book is she says, despite these nested collective action problems, there have been institutions throughout history that have actually done this as a community without government involvement and without private firms coming in. And so she's trying to figure out what makes those communities work. And of course with smaller communities you can have sort of social sanctions for not following through with your end of the bargain, which, which honestly helps. But you can have sort of adjustment of the rules over time to the situation such that the community feels these rules are fair after an iterative process and they're willing to actually invest in, invest the time in enforcing when it's fully enforced, everyone is willing to truly commit. And so if we think about the online space and governance over artificial intelligence, governance over, uh, social media algorithms, could groups of people come together and mutually agree upon a set of rules that they all thought was fair, um, that was enforced not just by uh, force from the outside, but by the community agreeing to collectively enforce? Could that happen? And this is one of my own hopes. I think understanding these nested multiplayer prisoner's dilemmas is really the first step to figuring out how can we make that happen in the digital space.